I'm Steve Moore with Intact. Today I thought I'd show you around the platform a little bit, some of the, the basic functionality, and maybe a few tips and tricks along the way. So the great thing about Intact is every new project is free. You can just click this button to create a new project. I feel like building a hotel. So that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna title it. And you know what? Why put off something good? I'm gonna start it on Monday. Hit next here. First screen it brings you to is uh, tax settings. Here it lays out the steps for you. You create your areas, your tasks, and then you can make settings with the dates and durations. So I'll just start with a kind of interior build out phase. It's more simple and straightforward. So I'm going to enter some of the floors here, floor one, and within each floor, we'll break out the zones of. Say so zone A, zone B, and so on. I'll make four of those. And why don't we add a few floors to this? So we make things dead simple to, uh, to duplicate areas, to reuse tasks from other places. We want to really decrease the, the barrier for building schedules. So I've already created for those P6 nerds in this group, I've already created pretty advanced WBS, just like that. And now within each one of these zones, on each one of these floors, we can add individual tasks. So I can create like a layout task and just start typing tasks in there. I am going to cheat. I'm just gonna copy these from another project. And I'll even copy these from a, a lean tack training that I took a while back. Phase one tasks of boom. Got a list of tasks. As it generates them, it automatically creates new colors, does all sorts of things. And then for the dates and durations, I can choose which days of the week are work days. Let's stick with the Monday through Friday. It's a classic. And a tax period. Um, how many days we want the, the standard rhythmic tax period to be. Then uh, we have our phase start date. We could put holidays in, all that good stuff. I'm just going to hit save, show you how fast it was for me to generate over 100 activities that are fully linked. So now I can click on one of these tasks. If I show the, the links on it, these are all the CPM links that are going to be exported with the, with the project. So that makes that uh, dead simple and just all logic, everything, calendars and all that are, are baked into that export. So the export comes from right here, this download button. You can go to PDF, Excel, P6, or Microsoft Project. I'll jump into one of the more interesting features really quickly. And feel free to interrupt me. I'm just going crazy here. Uh, if we want to see how these tasks get mapped on the drawings um, over time, you go to the area map. And check this out. So I'll upload a drawing. And I could drag into there, but I'll just, on my computer, just select a file really quick. And so here's a, a good-sized project. I'm going to scroll down here to find uh, some of the floors. So let's say I'll find this floor one drawing, and I'll say I'll add it to this floor one page. And I could zoom it and crop it and do all those things, but I'll call that good. Now I'm going to look at floor two, and I'll say... This drawing right here is floor two, so I'll add it to this floor two page. All right, looks good on the cropping. And then I'm going to grab this floor here. I'm going to add it to floor three. You can upload individual drawings, or you can just grab a PDF with all the drawings in them. Uh, multiple methods to, to select these. And I'm going to throw the roof on here. I know this is kind of an oddball. Probably shouldn't belong to the same flow of tasks, but I'll I'll add it here. Now notice now I have all the drawings selected and loaded and optimized, ready to go. I'm going to jump back to the area map, and I can click on a on one of these zones. This is from our zone creation. It already knows floor one has has four zones. Actually, I'll start with floor one. It already knows it has these four zones, so I'll just grab this first one. Tap it, drag it. I can even uh, zoom in if I want to be more precise. 
And you notice these nodes on the corners. So you can just drag those wherever you wherever you want those to appear. You know what it looks like, guy. It's a little bit off on that one. And you might have a question: How do you get more complex geometry out of it? So we got our snapping. I just double click, and then I get extra nodes. So I'll snap those in there. Create these complex, you can create pretty complex geometries with the, the simplicity here. Um, I'm gonna grab zone B now. Maybe I made that, I probably made zone A a little too big. So I'm gonna actually back that down a little bit. Maybe find these good dividing lines here. And then I'll snap these points on. This might be a silly question, but can you change the colors if you needed to? Yeah, so you change the colors in tact settings. Oh, so awesome. I can, uh, jump back and show how that happens. And I'm probably going a little too detailed for this demo, but why not, you know? I'm gonna get these crazy shapes on there. Then I'll grab a uh, zone C. Maybe I'll speed this up a little for the demo, but Cool thing is normally you wouldn't do this on a demo like showing the detailed linking of of zones, but we make it so dead simple that we can. Oops. We can build an entire animated tax plan right before your eyes. Boom, I'm gonna grab zone D, stick it on there. So yeah, the colors, they go along with the trades. So each trade has an assigned color and I can show how those work and what we do with those. But you'll notice I have these four zones mapped onto this floor one. Now check this out, floor two, so similar in shape, um, which can be very typical in a repetitive project like a hotel. I am gonna copy these same zones from floor one. Boom, don't even have to repeat that step again. So you know, we really work to optimize to reduce the number of steps you have to take. Are the floor plans scaled? Meaning like when you are creating the zones, does it show how many square, square meters it has or? So we don't currently have the, the scaling uh, where you can see like yeah, square meters or square footage on the floors, but that is something we've considered to help to, help to balance the tax zones. Um, you know, generally you want to balance the zones by the amount of effort, not necessarily the square footage, but that would be a handy feature for us to, to add that and to know. Um, check this out. I'm going to show a grid view. And because we have that schedule built and we have all the color coding and all that that came automatic, I can just grab this timeline and look at any date and time and I can see which trades are going to be working where in the plan. So it just makes it really easy to, I just built a really advanced um, zone map. I can, uh, of course, export this. I can export a particular day. So I could just jump into the future and say on this day, this is what it's gonna look like for each floor. Um, I could even show four per page if we want. So you can so, see like on which phase you are working on depending on the time you select, right? Yes, yeah, so you can see basically like any phase you can display it, um, display all the different areas, different floors, all those things all together as of a certain date. I could even put out a date range and say, show me every Wednesday or every Monday and Wednesday for the next few weeks. Maybe I'll just show every Wednesday. And now- completely customizable, which is great. All sorts of options there. So just cancel out of that. You did ask the question about the colors. So if I wanted to change the color for this trade for overhead and mechanical equipment, I could just maybe I'll make it a little bit darker <laughs> or you know, choose whatever color we wish for that. Um, something else you'll notice as these arrows pointing down here. So what that means is that it has some tasks already assigned to it. And so you can create standard subtasks. So I'm gonna create this one, it'll be um, this color, I can make it 
you know, an electrical task that's taking place during the fire sprinkler task. Um, but someone who's in the project is responsible for it. And boom, you get this task that you can just grab and drag and move wherever you want it. Um, sorry, let me get that set up right there. Um, just dead simple. You can add checklists to the tasks to make it so that uh, before or after the task is completed, you can have checklists that you can customize and, and create. I can even jump through all the other tasks and see what their subtasks are. I'm just going to hit confirm on that. Hit save. And it'll draw me into the, the schedule. Let's say I'll look at the work plan. It's the cool thing about this feature is all those standard subtasks I built have already created every weekly work plan for the entire project. So you have these all built. You know, we currently just have one phase of work, but here as we're progressing, you can click to, you know, say a task has been completed. Say a class Sorry about that. task did not get completed as planned. Um, this makes it dead simple for average people to be able to uh, to create, maintain work plans. So think about all the trade partners in this job that they just create their tasks, subtasks one time and automatically fills them in for the whole project. But if there is an exception, no problem. They can just create an exception just for that week. Oops. I'm going to skip all the other steps on that. So you'll notice it just happens for that one week, the other weeks, oops, which is back to normal. So there's a little view at that. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thank <music> you.